in this video i'm going to be showing you how to hear the clear voice of god so that you don't miss out your special times and seasons in the realm of the spirit a believer that knows the voice of God we never miss it when God is trying to communicate with him when God is trying to open doors of opportunities of greatness to that believer and guess what at the end of this video I have a practical prophetic video and as you watch it you are going to be coming into impartations that will open up your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears to hear the clear voice of God you don't want to skip these secrets for anything in this world please like this video because when you do so you are helping this video to spread to a greater number of people on this platform thank you very much you see the reason why jesus never made a mistake upon the earth because he saw you see sight spiritual sight and spiritual hearing these are very important dimensions that every christian should operate in and listen believers i honor the prophetic ministry i really love the prophetic ministry however you need to understand that you don't need to be a prophet to hear God speak clearly to you. Because there are two dimensions of hearing God. There is a dimension when you hear God with the gifting of the prophetic, the gifting of prophecy. Now, there is another dimension where you hear God by the dimension called sonship. Now, many people have not understood sonship. Listen, I say this with all humility and honor in my heart, all right? That is why you can hear many prophets say, oh, I hear God for people. Why don't I hear God for myself? That is because the prophetic gift is for ministry, to minister to people. So you see that this well-meaning, great, you know, rising prophet is speaking things for people. Oh, I see this, I see this. And it's very accurate. Now, when you ask that believer, what are you seeing about your life? That believer cannot speak what God is saying about his life. This is because the prophetic dimension is meant for ministry, it's meant for service, it's meant to minister to people. But when you understand sonship, sonship is the dimension where you can hear God for yourself and even for people. So don't be discouraged that, oh, I'm not a prophet, I can't hear God. Listen, so long you are a son, so long you are born again, this realm is open to you. Are we together now? So you may not be called as a prophet for ministerial purposes. You know, when you give people forensic details, I see this, I see this. You may not be called as that kind of prophet. But guess what? You are the first prophet of your life. So don't be discouraged and say, oh, I'm not a prophet, I can't hear God. So long you are born again, you should hear some certain things about what God is saying about your life and your future. Now look at what the Bible said. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it said, For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you seeing what the Bible is saying? That the day you become the son of God, the day you gave your life to Christ, you are licensed to hear God. You are licensed to be led by the Spirit of God. This is the dimension of sonship. In the dimension of sonship, if you don't see a gift in your life, you can make demand of that oppression in your life because you saw it in the life of Jesus. Because Jesus operated it, it means that we are licensed to operate in it. Listen, believers, you may not be forensic like the person called into the office of the prophet, but when it comes to the leadings of the Spirit over your life, when it comes to hearing God about decisions, about what to do, listen, this one should be open to every single believer. Listen, because we are sons, we can make demand on what we saw on the life of Jesus. And we are going to see those dimensions, even replicating in our own life. So don't stop getting discouraged. Look at what the Bible said in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. It said, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And you see what the Bible is saying? That Jesus is the firstborn. And I also said that the reason why God did all he did is so that we can conform into the image of Christ. Meaning what we saw Jesus do, we can do it also. Just like what the Bible said in John chapter 14 verse 12. He said, very truly I tell you, whosoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. Listen believers, we are licensed to manifest. If Jesus saw in the Spirit, it means that I should see in the spirit it means you should see in the spirit so when it comes to seeing in the spirit the first thing you must learn is that you must learn to tune your spiritual signals now you need to understand that listen if you turn on your television set if you don't change the station you are not going to be aware of what is happening in the other station are the stations working yes they are working but can you see them no you can't see them because you are not tuned 
to that station. And guess what? I'm going to teach you how to tune your frequency into the frequency of God. So God can be speaking. But if you are not tuned to his station, if you are not tuned to the frequency of God, that believer will not be able to hear God. So the way we tune into the frequency of God is by tuning into what I call spontaneous thoughts. Because God's word is spiritual. When God sends his word, God is speaking spirit. That's why the Bible said in John chapter 6, verse 63, it says, this word I speak to you, it said they are spirit and they are life. Are we together now? So when God speaks a spirit word, that spirit word does not land in our physical ears because God created our physical ears to hear men, but he created our spiritual ears to hear him. And what is our spiritual ear? Our spiritual ear is our mind. Just like what the Bible said in Daniel chapter 4 verse 10. He said, he said, in these visions of my mind, as I was laying in bed, I saw this come to pass. There was a tree in the midst of the land and its height was great. Are you seeing that God wanted to send a vision? The Bible said, Daniel called it the, the vision he saw in his mind. So you need to understand that your mind is where your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears are. The spiritual eyes of your mind is what we call imagination. Sometimes you are walking, you see that an imagination just builds up in your mind. Maybe you just see the face of somebody in your imagination. And suddenly you are going out, you see that person coming to your house. And you are like, oh, I just thought about you right now. No, no, no. You did not just think about that person. It is that God sent the person's image to the screen of your mind, which is called your imagination. Now you need to understand that your imagination works in two ways. The first way your imagination works is that you can imagine something willingly. For example, you want to imagine a big black jeep. You know, as I said it now, a picture was formed in your heart. Now that is you operating, that is you imagining by yourself. Now, there is another dimension of imagination where it is God that will send the pictures to your imagination. Even the dreams we dream at night. It is our imagination that is responsible for it. God sends pictures to the screen of our imagination. And when we wake up, we see it. We say, oh, I had a dream. You see, God does not create anything for fancy. In the Bible, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream. Now, when Daniel was about to interpret the dream, look at what Daniel said. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what would come to pass after this. And he will reveal secrets as made known to you what will be. How did God reveal the future to the king. The Bible said thoughts came to his mind. Of course, Daniel was about to interpret the dream of the king. So how did the dream come? The dream came as thoughts. It was a thought process happening, supernatural thoughts. God placed the imagination in his heart. Guess what? He woke up, he said he had a dream. Now, it means that you may not be dreaming, but if God wants to speak to you, he still sends thoughts and imagination to your mind. That is why when you pray, watch out for those thoughts and imagination that you were not originally planning to think about that just, that just came. Those are not distractions. Those are what I call God thoughts. So the way you tune into the frequency of God, the way you tune to hear what God is saying, the way you tune to the television station of God is by tuning into spontaneous thoughts. What do I mean? I mean that set your mind to catch every unexpected thought or image that bubbles that comes into your mind immediately you are praying or worshiping you get your book and bible you are praying in tongues or you are worshiping all that be your name oh god we worship you you see and as you are worshiping god all of a sudden the image an image just comes to your mind that you were not expecting you see those things what is happening is that you are tuning into the frequency of god already what is happening is that god is speaking to you but if you want to make it faster you want to tune faster while you are worshiping, keep the expectation in your heart. Keep the expectation to hear. Keep the expectation to receive something. You see, that expectation already is that you are tuning already. Just like Psalm 85 verse 8 said, Amplified Version. It said, I will listen with expectancy to what the Lord will say. And you see what the Bible is saying? I will listen with expectation, expectancy. You are worshiping God. People are seeing you worshiping, but something is happening within you. You, are, you have this expectation within you that something is about to come. You see, that expectation fast track the voice of God. Are we together now? So the way you tune into the frequency of God is to watch out for those tokens that will come to you. Spontaneous means so something that happens suddenly. Spontaneous means something that happens unexpectedly. Are we together now? Something that happens without you premeditating it, without you planning for it. That is what we call spontaneous. So sometimes you can have spontaneous images while you are practicing this. Sometimes you have spontaneous words. You did not see, you just heard something. You can have a spontaneous thought, just like what the Bible said in 1 Kings 19.13, NKJV. 
He said, so it was. When Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Are you seeing suddenly, or you can call it spontaneously, a voice came. Are we together now? So the first key you must understand, to pick accurately the voice of God over a matter, number one, steal your mind. Shut down all the noise in your soul. You can spend time speaking in tongues. How do you shut down noise in your soul? Noise can come in your soul by the things you've watched, by the things you've heard. You know, you're trying to pray and worship God. The last movie you watched is bombarding your mind. You don't even know how to take it away. You can spend time speaking in tongues or worshiping. Worship is a very fast route to making your soul still by taking away every noise in your soul. Because worship takes your, takes your attention from the physical world to God or to Jesus. So you are worshiping, you are singing worship. This is a very fast route to steal your soul. In 2 Kings chapter 3, Elisha at a point was, was, you know, he was not happy about a lot of things. But when it was time to prophesy, the Bible said he called for a worshiper, a mystery. The Bible said when the mystery played, the hand of God came upon him. Elisha's soul was noisy at that point because he had a lot of anger. You know, he was not happy about a lot of things. But worship, we take it away. And we together now, worship is a very fast route. You spend time worshiping. Number two, you tune into the frequency of God. How do you tune? By expecting. Listen, let me, let me give you a very fast route. Focus on Jesus while expecting. Many people can say, oh, man of God, what if, what if Satan now speaks to me? What if I now hear another voice? Listen, the angle you focus at is the angle that the voice will come from. You know, keep Jesus, the name Jesus in your mind. Or be conscious that somebody is standing close to you and his name is Jesus. Take that consciousness. The same way you are conscious that somebody is in your room with you. you just be conscious of Jesus. Are we together now? Tune into his frequency by expecting a word from him. Don't expect the word from Satan. God will not allow Satan speak to you when you are sincerely trying to hear him. Then number three, then pay attention to spontaneous words, spontaneous thoughts, spontaneous images. This spontaneous dimension happens in two ways. At times where you are not planning to hear God, where you begin to receive spontaneous words. You see, many times I'm praying, I'm not even tuning into the frequency. I'm just speaking in tongues or worshiping. All of a sudden, words are coming. I write them down. It is because God always loves to speak back to you when you speak to him. Are we together now? Now, now there are times where you are in need of answers for certain matters. Uh -huh. This is where you enter intentionally. Lord, what are you saying? You pay attention to spontaneous thoughts, spontaneous images, spontaneous videos, spontaneous words. Are we together now? Then the fourth thing, you take out your book, you write out everything. If you can practice this every day, I tell you the truth, you are going to be very deep and accurate when it comes to hearing God's voice. Believe this, it's true. Please tell us on the comment section what really stood out for you on this video. I would really love to read your comments. Please do not forget to kindly like this video by clicking the like button. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and please don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you always get notified whenever we post a new video on this platform. Thank you very much. God bless you. Who is Peter around here? Huh? Two. <laughs> that was like, you saw a few of your names entered my, this one entered left. Who is sitting with James? You. Clap for Jesus. Who is James? Your what? Younger brother. Younger brother. Clap for Jesus, somebody. Younger brother, his name is James. His name is James. You are Peter. Now, what God is showing me is that I'm looking at your family. And God is telling me that he's, about, he's wiping tears. I just saw, listen, I saw something like a towel. And I saw the Lord wiping tears. And I began to ask the Lord, Lord, what does this mean? And God said, he's about to launch this family into a season of prosperity. Because I'm looking at you in the spirit and this is like that. This is like the concern. This is like the concern. But if God be God, if God be God, I make a prophetic decree. You enter into it now. Precious. Who is precious? Precious. Come. Clap for Jesus. I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit. Can I talk to you? Can I pray with you? God wants to use you. Are you with me? I see the hand of God upon you. I'm seeing, I don't know why I'm seeing something like healing, 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 healing. The Lord says he wants to heal something. Are you aware of what I'm talking about? What is that? Are you comfortable staying it on the mic? No, you're not comfortable. Okay, leave the mic. What's that? What's happening to you? Difficulty in breathing. Cold, since when? When you were small. Since 
Nine, it will be healed now. Did you tell me before? You told me before. Put your hands on your chest. Put your hands on your chest. Where is Vice President? Please come. Vice, okay. Do you know her? You know her very well. Please, could you put, can you put your hands on her chest, please? No, no, put your hand first. Okay, okay, go good, go good. No, let Vice President put, okay? Uh-huh. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said difficulty in Britain for over nine years. Jehovah, Jehovah, we praise you. You spirit of infirmity, out of her. You are the man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man. You are the mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. Let me teach you a song. Let me teach you a song. Wait. Was she the one that threw up here? She threw up all this. Can you clap for Jesus, somebody? Can you can you clap for Jesus? That affliction. Listen. This is raw power. Yes, sir. Raw power. Yes, sir. And guess what? You are totally free from that infirmity. It will never return again. That affliction is over. Jesus' name. Where is, where is Vice President again? Please help her. Please help her. This is what you are going to do. Please, I will need ushers to come clean this up. Somebody should help her with water. She should, sister, your time has come. I just said something like Esther around this ear. Clap for Jesus, somebody. <laughs> somebody clap for Jesus. Come, sister, your time has come. Wait. I don't know. When I came to your side, I saw healing again. I saw healing again. What's happening? Your leg. Clap for Jesus, somebody. Lord Jesus, right here. We are not saying later. Let that pain come to an end. Is it here? The name of Jesus. Out! Out! Jesus' name. You are free. Tell me what is happening. There's a testimony here. Talk to me. This lady has had this leg pain for more than 10 years. 10, I, ten years? Since when, when you were small? Wow. The doctors have checked it. Wait, yes, sir. wait. Talk to me. Talk the, to me. The doctors have checked you. They could not find anything there. But the leg kept pain in her. Okay. She can't move. The only time she moves the leg, there's like something is. It is. Okay. But as you prayed for, her, as you called her name by prophecy, and as you prayed for her, the power of God hit her leg, and now she's totally healed. Glory. Can you celebrate Jesus? Jesus. She cannot move her leg. And what do you think she cannot power. do? What couldn't you do before? You could not move your leg like that before. Yes. Walk, walk. I want to be sure. Can you celebrate hey, Jesus? Hey, hey, hey. Come, come. Esther, right? Your miracle is permanent. Amen. 